What I'm going to show you today is a quick and very effective way to center a piece in a four jaw chuck. Now a lot of guys are afraid of four jaw chucks because they're pain in the ass to uh, get lined up. Now that's only true if you don't know how to do it. And with anything else, like anything else in, in machining, there's always a trick. Well, I'm going to show you a really slick trick and it may actually be so good that you take your three jaw chuck off and use a four jaw chuck from here on in. That's how easy this whole procedure is going to be. I'm taking all the pain and all the sweat out of centering a four jaw chuck. Now any four jaw chuck that's worth the price is going to have concentric lines machined into the face. Now these aren't just pretty decorations, these allow you to rough center a piece before you even get to the point of having to put an indicator on it. So what we're going to do, I know that I'm going to use a fairly big piece. This is the piece I'm going to be using. It's a piece of brass stock that I had in my junk box. Of course the surface is nice and clean and that's what you want. You want a piece that doesn't have dips and dings. It, otherwise it's very, very difficult to, uh, to put an indicator on it and get an honest reading. If you're going to be measuring bumps and dips, then you're going to have a problem. So try to make sure that the piece you're going to put into the uh, chuck has got a fairly good clean surface. If you have to use a little scotch bright or a uh, light sandpaper, um, then that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So I know this doesn't fit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to line this piece of the jaw up with this second concentric ring. All right, I'll do that on all four and I should be pretty close. What that does is it gives me a nice starting position. All right, so there's that one, and then the final one here. We're going to take it out like this, and look at that. I ho oh, ho. Yeah, I didn't practice this, right? Okay. So anyway, even if you're off a little bit, it's going to be good. Now, once we've got that in the jaws, we don't want to tighten it up too tight because we're going to be doing some adjustments here. So just so that it doesn't fall out. That's really what you're looking for. It's a good idea to take the lathe out of gear so that you can spin the chuck freely. Okay, and that's uh, going to help you. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount our indicator. And in this case, I have my tool post here that I'm going to mount. And I'm going to give that a little snug. And what I have is a dial indicator. I like dial indicators for this particular job a lot more than a test indicator because I have a lot more range of motion. A test indicator is going to give you a 0 30 or 50 50 and that's just not enough to really do this precisely. I put it in a little bar, mounted it in a tool post holder and we're going to just mount that. The other thing that's very important <coughs> and is actually in my opinion critical is that you have the indicator on center. Now you know you're going to turn around and you're going to put that on center by putting a, a center, a live center, a dead center in your tailstock and adjusting so that the point of the indicator matches the point of the center. Okay? So you're going to have it like that. Anyway, I'm sure you guys know how to do that. The other thing I do is I just come up here and I just touch the indicator to the piece so that I know I'm square, I don't have any angular irregularities. How's that? Angular irregularities, I like that. Say that three times fast. Now here's the good part. We're going to bring this in and what I want to do is I want to rearrange the, uh, the camera so that you'll see what's going on here. Okay, I think you can see that. That's pretty good. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this indicator and we're going to run it onto the piece and we're going to bring it, let's put our zero mark up here, zero and then go around one more turn. So this way I've got 200 thousandths in. You could go three, it doesn't really matter. What you want is you want enough motion on the indicator that if you're out 150 thousandths, obviously a test indicator wouldn't be able to measure that. So I don't think we're out that far. Now we're going to rotate that's our high side and we'll see where our low side is oh, I was actually pretty close okay so there's our low side what you do now is take the indicator and put it on the low side zero your your indicator at the lowest point now rotate it to the highest point 
and in that case this is uh, 47 47 so half of 47 is 23 and a half so we're going to back up I'm going to rotate the chuck back to 23 and a half 10, 20 1, 2, 3 and a half okay now again take the indica indicator and zero it at the midpoint what we've done is we've split the difference we're 47 out 47 thousandths out we're going to split the difference to 23 and a half now we take I'm going to have to change this again so that you can see what I'm doing okay this looks pretty good now we're going to take the next jaw and we're going to rotate it so that it's parallel with the bed and as you see the indicator just moved and what we're going to do now is the secret we need two chuck keys because if you don't use two chuck keys then this becomes very very difficult I have one chuck key and I made another chuck key what you're going to do is you're going to uh, you're either going to make one or you're going to buy one it's simple they're simple enough to make so it shouldn't be really a problem okay so here's the little chuck key that I made and we're going to put that in on the opposite jaw of course it's about 12 degrees in here my fingers don't work but there we go now here's the nice part about it we're always going to tighten on this jaw one of the big problems that people have when they're trying to work with a four jaw chuck is they forget which way to move the chuck key alright so then they wind up getting so far out of, out of square that they don't even know where they are this is great because you're always going to tighten and if you can see we're going to tighten it right back up to zero and then we're going to move to the next jaw now oddly enough that's still at zero so we're going to go around and you can see that this hasn't moved so on the uh, one in a million chance that we've got this thing squared up perfectly just by eye and only being uh, 47 thousandths out we actually did it what's going to happen is it's going to always measure on the high side and you're always going to tighten so it's really really cool it's really quick and I can show it to you uh, again so if we recap I've changed the uh, setting now we'll bring our indicator in a couple of turns around so that we've got some motion there that we have fore and aft we bring it to zero we'll rotate to find our low spot rotate to find our high spot we we'll go back to our low spot and we'll set our indicator at zero come back around to our high spot see where we're at in this case it's just about 21 so that's ten and a half rotate halfway back re-zero our indicator come to the next jaw put our two chuck keys in we need a mirror for this back one alright and we'll tighten till we get to zero rotate around to the next chuck jaw and repeat that procedure tight until we get to zero and we're square right now I'm within one thousand and again you can take that out use the same method just split the difference so I hope that helps demystify using a four jaw chuck and uh, just remember be safe Make sure that you wear proper eye protection and don't stick your fingers in the chuck when it's spinning. Those are the two things you need to know about uh, running a lathe. Well, that and don't crash the carriage into the chuck while it's spinning either. So there's three things you need to know. Other than that, now you know a fourth thing and I hope that'll help you out. I just want to make one other comment and that is when you get this squared away and you're within a thousand, stop because you can drive yourself crazy trying to take that last thousandth out and you can waste a lot of time and believe me 
Nobody needs to work to tolerances closer than a thousandth on anything that anybody watching this video is going to need. And if you do need tolerance that close, you're not going to be doing it on a 65-year-old lathe. So that's just my advice. Uh, working to plus or minus a thousandth is certainly, like they say, good enough for government work. So uh, unless you're building a rocket to the moon, and if you are, you're going to be not using a manual machine anyway. So that's just my advice to you. Don't chase your tail. Don't micromanage. Get it within a thousand, half a thousand. Hey, if you're lucky, you get it dead on nuts. So then proceed with the job and don't worry too much about that last half a thousand.